welcome to the Sari Sari Show. We're excited to bring to you a new program about Filipinos as well as the diverse Canadian community. We'll talk about living, learn about lifestyle, join events, discover places, and of course, meet people and know more about them. For our very first episode today, we have special guests who will talk about their passions, how they're pursuing them, and are on their way to success at a very young age. They will share information on interesting topics that include modified daily driven cars, wheels, baking, and ice skating. So don't miss out and stay tuned on the Sari Sari Show! We're here now with Mikey Cataluna, who's going to tell us more about um, car care, especially about racing cars, right? Sports yes. car? Sports okay, car. Thank you for being on our show, Mikey. You're welcome. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? So basically, I'm, uh, I was born here in uh, Mississauga. Um, when I was four years old, I moved back to the Philippines until I was 15 years old. Then I moved to the States for two years until I, I was 17, then moved back here in Canada. So, very exposed ka with both the Canadian culture and the Philippine culture. Yes. At your young age, what have you been busy with here in Canada when you came back? When I came back, I um, went to high school right away. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to Loyola and then graduated from Loyola. At the time, I, I was doing uh, part-time. Mm -hmm. Then, that's pretty much it. Okay, so I know, uh, Mikey, that you're involved in a business. He's a young entrepreneur. Imagine that at 24. So what kind of business um, are you doing right now? Uh, we're doing uh, pretty much Roto Wheels. It's a Philippine-based company. Uh, it's been around for 30 years. Uh, we just got the di distributorship here in Canada recently. Mm -hmm. And um, we're pretty excited to doing business here in Canada. So you're the official distributor here yes. in Canada, the yes. first one I hear. Yes. What made you decide to choose wheels as your business? Um, we decided to choose wheels because um, I'm a car enthusiast. I know a lot of car enthusiasts in the industry. Pretty much we have winter, right? Winter you still need other wheels for your summer. So a lot of people use our wheels, roller wheels, they put them on their car during summer to show off their car, pretty much. And um, right now, what we're trying to do is sponsor a lot of motorsport car, like track, race, drift car, because um, we're pretty much trying to promote that Rota is not just a regular street wheel use, right? We want the durability, the quality of the wheel is there. So that's why we're promoting motorsport. So how was the actual idea of getting to a wheels business born? Um, it happened on my birthday, I believe October. Uh, October. Um, me and my girlfriend's dad are having a conversation about what to bring here as a business. Uh, then I realized that there's a Philippine brand, Filipino brand uh, wheel company, which is Roda. And then um, I pitched in that idea that it, it would be good here in Canada because there's no distributor here in Canada of roller wheels. And then that's how everything started. So, Mikey, what does it take for someone to start a business? Because I know there would be a lot of young people out there who want to know, and they may have a lot of ideas framing in their mind, um, thinking that, uh, I, I like to do this, I like to do that, and I'd like to have my own business, not just work, just work for anybody, right? Yeah. So what does it need, does a person need to, to start a business? Start a business, it has to be your passion. I, it's, I started at a young age when my brother-in-law introduced me to the car scene. So I started by my first car, then I got really interested. Okay. How old were you when you bought your first car? Uh, I was... 18 I believe okay. 18 mm -hmm. then um, then I started setting up my car because of my brother-in-law uh, they visited here uh, from the Philippines then he's like you should set up your car make it look good and uh, this and that and then after a couple of days I'm like okay I'm gonna start doing it then I got really interested I started looking for a, a job as a pretty much a, as a mechanic 
Then I got interested in that, started working on my car, working on the in and out daily. Then I wanted to get into learning about the body work. So I started as a body body work uh, worked as a body prep guy. And then just so happened that my boss is a really huge car enthusiast. He has a lot of connection in the industry and um, he opened his own shop. That's where about everything happened. I used to go to events every Thursday. There would be an event at Vaughn, um, Heartland. There would be car meets, car shows going on every year. When uh, at least May st uh, starts, that's when all the car shows started. So every, every week, every month, I'm there. I will go see other people's car, look at their car, um, admire the car pretty much. After that, I'm like, I have to build my own car. And that's when everything started with the starting off with the wheels. And that's how everything started when you pretty much start up. So you build your own cars? Yes. So it's, um, you call that, it's like customizing it. Yes, customizing it. So how did you customize your car? Um, I started, it started when I started buying body kits. Um, then I started with lowering the car, putting wheels. Um, I would have put in Rota, but back back then there's no Rota dealer, uh, dealership here in Canada. Um, performance wise, that's I'm really into motorsport. I like tracking, drifting, and um, drag racing. So that's when everything happened, like my car, I had to join car events just to show off my car as wow. a car enthusiast, yeah. Now, it got me interested, um, that's something I've been wondering about, like if you customize your car, so you're deviating from their usual uh, branded, right, yeah. brand models, now how does somebody how hard or how easy it is to register a car that's not actually um, been sold as a brand or a model of, let's say, those big car companies. So basically, if you buy a, a Honda and you're not satisfied how it looks, but in your head, you, you can already see that you're customizing the car in your head. How, it, how do you want pretty much how it would look? So you start by looking online, go, going on the internet, looking for what will fit on my car. How, how would it look when I put these wheels? How would it sound if I put a different exhaust? This and that. So there's a lot of aspect of just modifying your car. Now, when you modify your car, do you have to actually, um, you don't have to register it anymore because it's already registered, right? Yes. Is there a change that you have to do, let's say, with your insurance? Um, to let them know that it's been changed. Because I know when I um, apply for a car insurance, they would ask us, would you have any paint on it, like advertise, put a logo, or I mean, if it's a car that got has been modified, is there also something to consider? Uh, yes, yeah, some insurance does a, doesn't accept modified car, but some does. So you can actually call your insurance company if it's okay to modify your car. Let them know at first before modifying your car. Oh, that's a good tip yes. to give out to all the people out there. Yeah. Um, before you actually modify your car, if you're interested, you have to make sure yeah. that your car insurance will accept it or yeah. find a car insurance that will accept yes. modified cars. Because uh, what happens is if you get into an accident and they didn't know your car is modified, all the money that you spent on your car will not be covered. Will there be a difference in the uh, rate like, is it more expensive for um, car insurance? For me, it never really went up. It's just that I had to let them know that um, I'm modifying my car. And I had to send them pictures. Okay. As long as it's safe, because some people go to the extent that their car is so lowered that it will just scrape everywhere. And that's not safe for the community as well. Okay, so another tip that you're saying too is that aside from checking out car insurances, you have to also know what is acceptable in the industry yes. when it comes to modifications, like how low it should be yeah. or how high it should be. Yeah. Okay. So what other things should we know about modifying? Like what other things should people out there know um, that 
there are specs yes. or specifications that have to be followed. Like when you want, I want to modify, let's say my windows. Is there something that I need to know that I can't go too much? Like um, probably with seat covers, it's not a big deal, but aspects that people should know that has to meet standards. What tips can you give for those people who are interested in modified daily driven cars? Uh, make sure you get the proper suspension, especially brakes, uh, proper wheels, and proper tires to make everything safe because you're running on your wheels and your suspension. You're putting stress on it daily. So you have to make sure everything is properly done when you modify your vehicle. Your, your product right now, um, we've been talking about modified daily driven cars. Yeah. But like me, uh, I just drive a regular car. So could I actually use those kinds of um, wheels? Yes, um, you can use those wheels. Actually, back home in the Philippines, they are used as the stock wheels of Toyota and Ford, I believe, and um, Honda as well. Rota is basically making stock wheels for Hondas and them, uh, Hondas, Toyotas, and Ford. So it's not even modified, it came straight from the factory, but they're running on Rotas. That's a, not a lot of people know about that. I know that a lot of young people out there would like to know. They, there will be a lot who would be interested in setting up a business. For somebody as young as you, what tips could you give them to make sure that they're starting their business right? First is you need to know what you're getting into. For me, it started as a passion. Then I had to learn everything um, about the cars. Then it became uh, my connection. My connection is one of the big things that help me out in this starting this business. What I could also see is that having been a mechanic before has um, the experience of knowing what you're getting into. The actual experience in that kind of field is also a big factor too, right? In, in doing a business. Yes. How have your connections helped you in this business right now? You just started in May of this year and I've heard that you have now grown quite really well for a business that's been there for less than two months. I have a lot of connections in the car industry so e even before we brought brought the company here I already talked to my friends and they said bring it because we need a distributor here in Canada because it's all all of them are based in the States and Australia, UK as well. So how did you build your connections? Like, is it something that you just started doing through work or it's something that, like, how would you advise them on creating connections? I, I always hear that, right? Create your connections. Yeah. How do you s create your connections in the business? It started when I started joining or going to car events with a couple of my friends. Uh, we, I made a couple of friends from the car scene that I didn't even know they had a business. Then everything started from there. We used to go every Thursday at a car meet at Vaughn. Then just keep expanding, expanding, expanding. Next thing I know, I have a lot of friends that has business as well. For example, the guy that I used to work with, he expanded my knowledge pretty much in the car scene. He started bringing me to bigger events, um, heavy, heavily modified cars, teaching me all the stuff that I need to know about cars. So that's when, when it started for me. So I learned from you right now that actually when you creating connections, it doesn't really mean that you're doing this because you yourself is interested in setting up a business because you just mentioned that the idea that came about of starting up the business was just in October last year. Yeah. And you've been building your connections or let's say your network of friends from 
so many years back, yes. right? So that's one thing that I think a lot of young people should understand or should know that it's pretty good to be involved in a lot of things where you meet a lot of people because you don't really know that someday somehow um, you'll be in the same world doing the same things. Yeah. Okay. What are the factors that people should remember in running a business? First is passion. Second is experience. Third is connections. And fourth is knowledge. Wow. That's P E C K. Yeah. So remember that P C K. Passion, experience, connection, and knowledge. Yeah. Mikey, thank you very much for being on the Sari Sari Show. We've learned a lot about modified daily driven cars and about running a business. Thank you for having me on your show. And if our audience and our viewers would like to know more about um, your product, where can they find you? They can go to www.rotowheels.ca. Our Facebook account is www.facebook.com slash Canada. And our Instagram account is rotowheels.ca. Uh, Thank you. And you can get all that information underneath. Thank you again. Thank you.
would like to thank Mary and Mikey for guesting in our show. And we would like to thank you for watching us in our very first episode. If you have any questions or need more information, please visit us at our website and we'll be glad to hear from you. We invite you again to watch us in our next episode here at the Sari Sari Show. Thank you and see you again.